the Black Widow Wars as we enter a new phase in two respects. So now we have this bit of a leak showing that Black Widow had an alternate ending, and it's actually fairly interesting. I do like the ending. I don't know if it really changes the story all that much or really raises the score. I give it a 6.5 still, but it's very interesting in terms of what they were thinking with Black Widow and what they wanted to do. And added to this now, apparently Disney's retaliating and they're going to get rid of a ScarJo project. I think we all fully expected this, but this is getting both pretty silly, but also very interesting at the same time. So we're going to see the alternate ending, judge it, and then move on to the alleged blacklist problem. So I agree that, yeah, it makes a lot more sense to retain this ending with her essentially returning home. At least it gives it a, at least that gives the narrative a much more circular kind of shape. And those narratives I usually do like. I like when we basically go back to the beginning and have, you know, moved on in a certain way. And I think it was well shot. Does it really change all that much, though? No, but I do think it impresses upon just the audience and critics, that they still really didn't have a good idea with Black Widow. They just sort of wanted a little bit of everything. They wanted an action film, a family film, a very funny film, an action, a very Jason Bourne film, a James Bond film. They just wanted to reach a lot of genres and a lot of audience and have this kind of feminist message subtext. And it's sort of like, it's not a Frankensteinian monster like Rise of Skywalker, but it's kind of close that it's being very mass marketed in very different directions. And I think ScarJo is not taking enough responsibility here. She helped choose the director. She helped choose the script. She helped choose the talent, right? And notably, none of them are supporting her. They're like, eh, we really don't care. This is your thing. So in terms of how it's not working out for her, she has to take at least a little bit of responsibility that it's not clear what they wanted to do with it. They just wanted a generic, good Marvel film, put it out there, and people would just flock to it. And not surprisingly, people disappointed them because like, she got her audience. That's fine. But in terms of the larger audience, they were like, what exactly is this thing? It seems to be failing at various points. I think it is more good than bad. But I can't really argue against people who really hone in on its problems, as some video essays are starting to do. So I don't believe that people say it's the best film of all time. But still, I do think it's middling, and it could have been made a lot better, but they made certain bad choices. But now into the blacklist. Well, I'm not really worried about this. ScarJo is strong enough and big enough. It is technically a violation of the law if they are making this serious as a blacklist and retaliating against her but she has powerful lawyers and she can put this as part of her suit against disney so i don't think they're gonna be stupid enough to really try to maintain this blacklist because that would put them in a very bad situation but even if it does hold and they're able to deny her projects listen we're just not in the same situation we were even 20 dec you know 20 years ago where you needed to be an actor in the seven studios you just don't like there are so many studios in the world now she can work with so many much smaller studios in europe in asia and japan she's not going to be starving for work and she's worked with smaller directors like the cohen brothers which i respect her a lot for so she's going to be just fine and in terms of her finances she's going to be fine there so this is kind of like a non-traversy at the very best but it is still an issue where this I would agree with some subscribers who have really stuck up to her and said, well, you know, it's about equality under the law. And the answer is, well, yes, but these are two major corporations. However, I do think here the blacklist is troubling because this is kind of a violation of the ground rules where it's like, no, no, no. You know, on the one hand, yes, these companies basically do have a monopoly on media content, but it's not formal. There's always a chance for a smaller producer or smaller company to come in at least at the formal level. So there's never a formal monopoly, but doing a blacklist explicitly does create a formal monopoly, and that is not good. Even if Scar is one of the richest women in the world, that doesn't matter. A formal monopoly is a monopoly, and that is abhorrent. So unless you're going to be an extreme libertarian or an extreme pro-capitalist and just say, well, monopolies are fine too. No, I don't think even from a very pro-capitalist perspective, you can defend monopolies. Monopolies on their very face are bad. So in this case, I am actually sympathetic to her. But again, it's not going to have any practical consequence, but I think legally, yes, this should be fought if they're going to be really serious about having a blacklist against her projects. But uh, I don't think things have changed all too much for her. The film is still, mm, it's still the mediocre thing it is. It's doing mm, just barely okay at the box office and with streaming. It's going to be profitable enough, but yeah, it's more of a 
missed and hit, but it's a, just a middling failure. It's not devastating. But the Blacklist, I think, is a much more interesting, if disturbing, kind of trend that Disney may be pulling in the future, as well as other companies. And there we are with the latest installation of the Black Widow Wars. Thank you for listening.